to this uh, product demonstration. My name is Gerhard Steiner, uh, together with my colleague uh, Frank Tettig, who is still there in the, in the off. Good morning. Uh, we are going to uh, present you the setup of a, a Grim SMPS Plus C system, um, show you the unboxing, uh, show you uh, the individual components, uh, describe them, and then also will uh, give you a tour through the um, through the software. What uh, possibilities we have using the Grim uh, uh, Nano software. So um, first of all, a look at the box that you typically get when you purchase a Grim SMPS Plus C system. It's delivered uh, in this uh, petty case. Uh, where uh, everything is neatly uh, packed, so it's also for later on use quite useful to use that box where, when you want to ship it uh, to your uh, destination of uh, desire, to your measurement site, to your uh, field campaign. So it, it has got several layers. On the top layer there is some accessories, um, there is a um, um, some tubing, all the electrical connections, there is also a kit uh, with uh, spare parts and uh, some basic tools to um, to to to, uh, to do some maintenance on your instruments. Um, this is the first. Uh, this is the first layer. Thanks. Mark. On the second layer, I hope you see that in more detail. There you can all already see the the main instrument, the 5416 CPC. More to that in a minute. And uh, there's also a first, first uh, accessory uh, to take out a base plate where we can put all the other instruments on top of it uh, later on. So removing that layer that also uh, inc uh, includes a, a, a universal uh, power plug typically. So there uh, you can see more, uh, more instruments in there. The, the CPC. There is also a compartment for the measurement computer, typically. Um, there is a compartment uh, for the differential mobility analyzer, another one for, for drain and uh, butanol fill bottles. But first, we need the, uh, the, the main instrument, the CPC model 5416. This is the one. And uh, this is uh, uh, more or less the top range model of CPCs we have at Grimm. There is actually another one called the 5417. It's a new model, the brand new model. This version here has got an integrated DMA voltage controller, um, so you can hook up a DMA onto uh, to this to this instrument. Uh, it has got an integrated sheath air supply. Um, supplying uh, three liters a minute um, for, for, uh, for the sheath flow. This model has got a sample inlet flow rate of 0.3 liters a minute. Um, the 5417 uh, is uh, the more advanced version of this one here. Uh, we, we are presenting it uh, in course of uh, the so-called PSMPS setup. If you want to know more about that, uh, you are cordially welcome to, um, to 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 watch my video on the on the on the PSMPS setup, where the 5417 CPC is part of it. Um, it's also featured uh, today in the aerosol measurement technique session, uh, half past um, two, I believe. Um, where where the, the setup and all the features of the PSMPS will be discussed. Um, the, the 5417 has, uh, has, in addition to the 3 liters a minute sheath flow supply, another flow possibility of 10 liters per minute, and also a second option for the inlet flow rate of 0.6 liters a minute. All those flows are controlled by temperature stabilized critical orifices. And, um, um, can be also um, set in the in the user software. So the six fifty four sixteen CPC uh, on the front uh, is quite a, a clean a clean setup of the whole instrument. On the front there are a couple of uh, LED uh, um, 
lights, LEDs, uh, indicating the status and the operation of the instrument. So there is one LED um, showing the, if the heater of the critical orifices is on or off. Then uh, the second one, if uh, the sheath flow is um, switched on, then there is a status LED showing if the, the DMA works correctly or is correctly hooked up to the instrument. Then an LED for uh, tower. Another one, if the temperature of the CPCs, if the temperature, if the set points of the temperatures um, are met already or not. So this indicates if it's already in operating condition. Um, then there is uh, a, a general status LED that indicates if some of the parameters uh, are not yet met or, or are on their uh, nominal values. And uh, the last one shows the uh, status of the liquid level. So this indicates if uh, enough uh, butanol uh, is still in the, in the, in the saturator wick. So this is the front panel. On the back side, there are all the uh, 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 other uh, or, or, or all the all the uh, connections that's needed for operation. Uh, most important for the CPC functionalities um, is uh, here on top the uh, liquid inlet port. This typical. This typical um, um, uh, butanol uh, fill bottle um, uh, connectors. Then there is a port for connecting the DMA. Um, uh, most importantly mentioned here is that uh, the high voltage power supply for the DMA is not included in this instrument, but it's included in the uh, in the DMA itself. So here. Basically, just uh, controlling voltages, uh, uh, setting the DMA voltages um, uh, are connected. Then there is a USB port for connecting the instrument to a computer. Then there is a flash, uh, flash drive port to apply, uh, op or, uh, to apply uh, future uh, firmware updates. But this can also be used to save data um, online on a, on a flash drive stick. Then there is the possibility to hook up um, uh, a, um, a, a, a specific uh, meteorological sensor, or actually there are a couple of different ones um, uh, that can be um, uh, used in addition uh, to, the, to the, 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 the data readings of the instrument. Then there is the here called condensate outlet. So this is the drain um, drain outlet of the of the of the CPC. A uh, little bit more on that in a minute. And uh, also an exhaust port where the instrument um, has the exhaust uh, where where uh, particle free but uh, still uh, butanol saturated air is leaving the instrument. Of course, it has got a uh, uh, a main switch and a, a power power cord uh, connector, and um, so this these are the typical features of the CPC. The condensate outlet, maybe one word more to that. So one one thing that's uh, quite uh, um, special or or um, typical for green CPCs for many many years already is that there is a um, condensate a micro pump um, drawing off any excess uh, condensate uh, liquid, condensed liquid that's uh, a, dr a draining of the of the condenser, and this is uh, drawn out of the instrument into a specific uh, drain bottle here. Uh, on the top of the instrument, there is uh, the, the the unit that's um, important for operating it together with the DMA. So here we have. Basically, two ports. This is a sheath air outlet port and an excess air inlet port. And those ports are connected to a um, those ports are connected to a DMA uh, to the DMA sheath air pump and the critical uh, critical orifices um, that, um, as I said, are temperature stabilized and maintain this this uh, well defined and um, um, well controlled uh, volume flow rate. 
So what we do when uh, maybe one point more is maybe one of the most important ports of the instrument at all is the inlet port, the central inlet port. It's here located on the left hand side of the instrument. Something that's really unique, uh, as at least to my knowledge, is this um, this uh, key operation of the sample inlet. So what we have here is the so-called saturator key. Uh, it uh, it operates a mechanism that physically shuts off the CPC saturator from the condenser and the following optics. So this is a kind of a safety feature that. Um, when you handle it or have to move or transport the instrument, you do not necessarily need to drain or to dry the instrument completely. What you just have to do is to, to turn that, that key so the shutter um, closes and no butanol at all can physically um, enter the condenser or, what, which is most important, can enter the, uh, the optics and to um, to, to damage any 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 of the optics in there. So uh, we will um, uh, uh, take that out one here and exchange it by a sample inlet tube. So um, what we then typically um, uh, mount first is a butanol fill and but and the excess and uh, the, um, the butanol fill and the, the uh, condensate drain bottle. So this is the butanol fill bottle. What we have here at Grimm are those uh, magnetic uh, snap-on uh, holders and the butanol fill bottle is simply plugged in at this point. Uh, the head cap um, of the butanol bottle is also provided with, uh, with a tube that we can later on, uh, which needs, needs of course to be opened so that um, the butanol can be uh, drawn out of this reservoir into the saturator. And we can later on connect this also to the exhaust port that there is no uh, unnecessary, uh, unnecessary um, butanol smell in the room. So, Second is the uh, condensate bottle, the drain bottle, snapped on on the bottom and also plugged in. What else? Of course, power here on the bottom. Uh, another one is the uh, what we typically use is a USB uh, a USB cable to connect it with with uh, the. Uh, controlling and uh, measuring computer. Something I may have missed in the beginning was that there is also an optional um, serial port RS232 uh, uh, port, where can, which you could, could also use for, um, for uh, connecting it to a computer if you like. Then what we uh, typically use is those uh, eight millimeter polyurethane or poly F, uh, polycarbonate uh, tubing for um, connecting the, the CPC to a to a um, to the DMA. So sheet air outlet here on top. We use yellow for that. Excess air outlet on the bottom. This would be the black one. So now I'm going to turn the instrument around. and ask my colleague for the DMA. This is uh, the long column DMA, Vienna type DMA of Grimm. Uh, at Grimm we have three different models in the instrument portfolio. So this is the long one, the L DMA. There is another one, the M, it's the middle, middle length size and uh, as you could imagine, there is also one called SDMA. Uh, it's the smallest one. Uh, in combination with the 5416, it's um, quite, well, maybe just feasible to use middle or long DMAs. The long DMA has a channel length of 350 millimeters, and if it's operated with uh, the sheath flow uh, that can be supplied by the 5416 CPC, which is three liters a minute, 
It has got a size range from 10 to roughly 1,100 nanometers, so 1.1 micron. This middle length size is, um, um, is, uh, has got a length of 88 millimeters, and if it's used at that uh, flow rate, it has, a, uh, it has a size range between 5 and 350 millimeters. Uh, this is the, uh, in this version, the so-called UDMA. So there is a conversion kit available where you can convert this long column DMA into this middle size DMA. And if you like, you could also convert it in the so-called SDMA. The SDMA has a channel length of uh, 15 millimeters. It's more, way more feasible to operate it at um, uh, somehow um, uh, enlarged sheath flow rates. So this was one of the reasons why we developed the, the 50 for 17 DMA, uh, CPC, excuse me, uh, where we have a sheath flow of 10 liters a minute and the SDMA at 10 liters a minute has a size range between 1.1 and 55.7 nanometers. If you want to know more about that, again, you are welcome to, um, to watch my video on the PSMPS system um, uh, in course of the ESC, uh, online ESC here in Aachen. So this is the, um, uh, the, the fix. This is the uh, setup of the DMA. Uh, when you get it, there are some uh, dust protection caps on the sheet there in that. And on the uh, uh, excess air outlet, the excess air outlet is included in um, a what we call the, the DMA base. There is uh, already one filter included to to filter the excess air and to um, um, to save uh, to save the, the internal sheet air pump. Uh, not to be um, uh, contaminated with dirt too much. This is the uh, sample air outlet. And uh, we have these marks here on the, on, the, uh, on the base plate that we can nicely um, place the DMA here next to the, next to the CPC and uh, have them um, <coughs> well um, position to each other and uh, uh, gives the nice uh, uh, compact setup of the instrument. So the sheath air inlet is here on top of it, the excess air outlet on the bottom. Another special feature of the uh, Grimm DMAs is that um, we have the possibility to um, attach a uh, aerosol neutralizer directly to the DMA. So in this case, this is an americium 241 source. Uh, and if you are uh, when, so so if you uh, if you connect it directly to the DMA, there are much less um, strict regulations uh, active to transport it and to handle it. Uh, and also, it's also it's also a safety feature that it's. Um, bolted to the instrumentation and therefore cannot be um, get loose or, uh, or just be taken by a colleague uh, because he or she will need it uh, in some other experiment. So it's, it's nicely stored there also. There are uh, some other, um, some other, there are um, not only the Amaritium source available, at Grimm, but there is also a soft X-ray source, um, then a nickel 63 source, a, um, and the so-called ADBD, the analog dielectric barrier discharge source. All of them are, um, are uh, bipolar sources uh, establishing a Fuchs-Boltzmann charge equilibrium. Um, the DMA is also connected directly to the instrument. And uh, here on top of the instrument of the DMA is the aerosol inlet port. The inlet contains already uh, an, an impactor. So for the long column DMA, we have various impactor plates available. With this one, the cutoff is in the range of 1,000 
200 uh, nanometers, so ensuring a, a precise limit of the of the size distribution you are measuring, and therefore ensuring that the uh, data inversion algorithm uh, works correctly. So this is, as I believe, the basic setup of Agrim SMPS. So uh, we could now connect the aerosol source in. Um, uh, we could uh, all, uh, we could now connect our aerosol source, the sample inlet to the instrument, start the software, and uh, and, and and start the measurement. Uh, I will show you some of the features of the of the software just in a minute. Just to mention, this is the what we also call the desktop lab version of the instrumentation. All of that is also available in a 19-inch rack version that can be easily um, mounted in measurement stations, in containers, in 19-inch rack supports to, uh, uh, to, to be operated in the field. So this was the first tour of all the, in, of the, of the instrumentation. Um, may, may I ask, are there, are there any questions from, from, from the audience about, about this setup, about the instrument? It appears not. In this case, I would like to uh, go behind the screen and uh, uh, share uh, with you my screen of the Grim Universal Nano software. There is operation modes uh, in short, so the possibilities are scanning, stepping, single channel and counter, scanning the fastest possibility to scan a whole size distribution, uh, stepping is to do it more slowly and do it uh, in a more customized way uh, of uh, your specified um, size limits uh, uh, you would desire. Single channel is to generate monodispersed aerosol out, cutting out a a, a specified um, monodispersed diameter out of a broad size distribution to use it for to use it for example as a calibration aerosol uh, to calibrate some other instrument in your setup and obviously as I uh, said in the beginning uh, it, it could also be just used as a counter where no DMA is uh, connected to the instrument to just record the total number concentration of aerosol. So in this case, I would like to use it in a, as a scanning mode because it gives us the, the, the broadest variability of settings. Uh, here you could also uh, enter a location code and also enter a dilution ratio if there is some um, diluter, for example, used at your inlet. This is not the case at the moment. In the communications tab, you would here connect the COM port you are typically using. Um, something you want to use is the lab, the, the, the time of the measurement computer. Uh, another option, if you use it for long-term measurements, is to create one new file per day. Then there is the option to combine it as a wide range system. Um, I believe tomorrow there will be a demonstration of the uh, 11D uh, optical aerosol uh, spectrometer, and this instrument can be combined with, uh, with um, the SMPS plus C system to have a combined uh, wide range aerosol spectrometer that can then access the size range from, uh, let's say, 5 nanometers up to 35 microns and give you an overall size distribution of that. Then uh, you could also connect it with a data logger where the data is then stored uh, on this uh, previously specified um, web server. Then there are settings for the carrier gas, um, the gas type you are using, the pressure and the temperature. Uh, most often this will not be of an issue, but for example, if you use it at high altitude um, measurement stations, let's say Jungfraujoch, let's say Sondlik in Austria or wherever, where you have um, a decreased pressure, this pressure will then also, of course, uh, affect your mobility measurement of the DMA and therefore affect the whole size distribution um, 
um, uh, calculation, and you could you could uh, you could um, account for for this lower pressure uh, already here in the in the settings tab. Of course, all of that can be used or can be set also in uh, post processing. So uh, nothing is lost when you use the wrong pressure here. Um, all the raw data is recorded and can be recalculated and re-evaluated at any point you desire. So, uh, fourth tab is the used DMA. Here you have the possibilities to choose between the LDMA, the long column DMA with 350 millimeters gen length. Uh, there is the, the, uh, this box. Uh, Vienna checked because uh, in former days there were also uh, different types of DMAs in the Green portfolio, but since I believe 10 years it's the Vienna type DMA or even longer. Um, the charger type here is called standard. Then um, the DMA type you can choose between uh, one of those three lengths. Let's, let's stay with the LDMA. Then there is the sheath air uh, set to 3 liters a minute and the sample air to 0.3 liters a minute. In this case, you cannot change, uh, uh, you cannot choose any other uh, option here because this, the, the software recognizes that this specific model, the 5416, is connected that only is able to give you a sheath flow rate of 3 liters and a sample flow rate of 0.3 liters a minute. It would be different, for example, in the new version, the 5417. There you can choose between 3 and 10 uh, and 0.3 and 0.6. Also, you may be aware that there is also a possibility of the SMPS plus E system. So it's an SMPS combined with an electrometer. Uh, there we are using uh, a, um, um, a, a another, another uh, sheath flow supply unit called the DMA controller. And that one can also um, provide a, a, a broader variety of different flow rates um, up to 20 liters per minute. So this is not the case here. So with three liters uh, per minute sheath flow, it has got a range between 10.25 and 1090.21 nanometer. Um, then there is a tab uh, for the spec specified for especially especially for the counter or single channel mode. Um, there you could specify the sample interval. So one second is typically used uh, as a CPC. Again, here sample interval FCE. Um, that would be used if you use an electrometer as a, um, as a detector. Uh, here diameter, diameter single channel. Here you would set the, the diameter of, of your interest that should be um, classified in a single channel mode of the DMA. Now everything is grayed out because we are using the scanning mode. Also the stepping mode is grayed out. Um, there is a standard setting of the stepping mode uh, suggesting um, uh, 54, uh, 54 uh, channels starting at uh, uh, 10.23 nanometers going up to 1090. Um, you can customize it that to, to almost uh, uh, any, any values of your desire um, if that's uh, important for your application. Then the scanning mode. Um, uh, the default settings tell me here it's scanning from 20 to 100 nanometers. This is not the full range. If I type in here, for example, 10, it will set it to the, the mini, minimum diameter that's possible. So that's 10.25. And if I, if I set here the maximum to 1200, it will automatically set it to the maximum diameter, which is 1090. Then there is this X and P value. So X would mean that in this, uh, in this um, uh, voltage ramp, there are 200 uh, specified voltage points that the, the software um, sets. And P would be uh, the, the, the duration each, each voltage, uh, each set voltage um, um, is, is kept, the voltage is kept for that duration. 
there are uh, some wait times between up and down scans. So typically the system starts with a down scan starting at high voltage, which would be 10,000 volts, by the way, scanning down to the minimum voltage of 5 volts, waits for 20 seconds, and uh, immediately uh, starts after the scan time with, a, with an up scan. TC would be uh, the, the time that the system uh, averages over the, over the counts received by the, by the detector, and then there is a, a TD additional, an additional plumbing time that accounts for the tube length between DMA and the detector. In our typical setup, this additional plumbing time is zero, but by whatever reason, you may use some different tubing, some other length of tubing that will cause here an additional plumbing time that can be accounted for in this, in this, uh, in this box here. Then, uh, number eight of the tab is uh, settings that you can make for the diffusion and losses. What we have determined in, uh, uh, in our laboratory tests were effective length of the DMA and the typical inlet of the, uh, of the americium 241 source. So when we apply a laminar diffusion deposition model to um, uh, typically recorded um, DMA penetrations, we can calculate an effective length of the DMA, which would be here in the case of the LDMA, a length of 3.5 meters. In addition to that, we have an effective length of the inlet using this americium source of uh, 38 centimeters. Uh, this effect, especially the effective length of your inlet, may vary because you may use some different neutralizer, you may have some different kind of inlet, and uh, there you can uh, uh, decide on yourself which effective length of the inlet would, would be appropriate for your setup. And last but not least, there is a tab showing all the settings you just have, mad, have, have made. Um, it, uh, it sums up all the settings the software will send to the CPC, and when we press now OK, which I will not do now because the CPC is not connected to this computer, uh, all the settings would be sent to the CPC. The CPC would, um, would, be, uh, would be set into its uh, measurement conditions and you could start the measurements then. So um, this was a tour through setting up the... Um, this was a tour. I, would, I will go back to the front. This was a tour through uh, unboxing an SMPS Plus C system from uh, Grimm. We uh, did set it up. Set it up. Uh, I hope I was able to show you the um, individual components in, in detail and explain what those, uh, uh, how those instruments uh, uh, combine with each other and how we typically set it up. I did also show you a tour through the set possible settings of the, of the Nano software. And if you have any questions on that, I would be happy to take your, uh, your questions. So if there are no questions or maybe other questions in the chat, Maybe not. If there are no questions at the moment, uh, you are welcome to contact us at any time uh, during the online EAC in the chat box of our online booth. Um, and uh, again, today is a discussion panel, discussion session on uh, this PSMPS setup, a uh, half past two. If you're interested in that, maybe we will meet, uh, we'll meet uh, each other there. So thanks for watching and uh, goodbye.